Okay, here we go. We're going to talk about the theme API. If my remote works, it should, which it doesn't, and I don't like that. Anyway, it's not just the remote that isn't working. Mm. Just Keynote crashed, wait a second. Didn't know it could crash, but it can, and it did. Let's try the thing again. Yeah, that's better. Well, what we're going to talk about is the theme API. Um, well, first of all, a few things to note. I'm Rolf van der Krol. If you're not Dutch, you won't probably be able to pronounce my name. Um, and we're going to talk about the theme API. I work at Hoppinger, a Dutch web design company, and we build sites for all sides, all sides of companies and organizations like this uh, branch organization, a polit uh, local politics organization. And this is us. So uh, welcome to Hopping Air. Second thing, if you have any questions, ask, uh, feel free to just ask them. Don't wait until the end and I say, OK, I'm finished. Any, any questions? I will say that. but. If you get questions in the middle, then just ask them. Good. What we're going to do is take a look under the hood of Drupal. This is the car of my father-in-law, and he's really proud of the thing. It's, this is the actual car. <laughs> well, I, I'm not really a fan of those cars. It's, it's a Dutch make, and he's really proud of, of the car. Don't know why, but... It's his baby. But it was nice for the uh, under the hood thing because it, he knows a lot about that car. He knows actually how the car works. He completely stripped it out and built it up again from all the pieces. He knows every screw in the thing. And he knows everything about the car. So, and that really helps him to do everything he wants with the car. And I'm hoping to give you a little bit of that about the theming API of Drupal. This should look familiar. If you don't, if you see this and you think, well, what is this? Then you're going to have a hard time. Well, the, th this is the call to the, to the well-known theme function. And it does a, a really a lot of magical things. This function magically turns this into this. And why and how? That's what we're going to discuss. And more importantly, how can you change that behavior? Because you might, might like this output, but the theme function also outputs a lot of other different things. And you probably don't like that. There's a lot of complaints about HTML Drupal. And even if you don't have any complaints about it, then still, you don't want you you sometimes for a theme want to change it because your client wants it to look some way, and you're stuck. If you're just stuck with HTML Drupal by default provides, then you can have a problem. Well, the function has uh, what we call two parameters. The first is the the content of it is links and we call that the theme hook. It actually tells the theme function what it is that you're going to give him and how it should start, uh, how it should, should do something with it. In this case, it says, I'm going to give you a list of links and I want it to be themed like a list of links. And this part is called the variables and it actually gives what should be themed? So the content, in this case, the actual list of theme, list of links, and uh, which title you want above it. 
Well, you saw that in the HTML example that there was title up on top of it. If you didn't, well, there was. Back to the thing called the theme hook. The theme function takes a look at what is called the theme registry to find out what it should do with the theme hook. And the theme registry is actually a big filing cabinet. It has a drawer for every available theme hook in Drupal. If, it, if the theme function doesn't find your, uh, uh, your theme hook, then it returns nothing because it doesn't know how to do anything with it. This is in the drawer for links. So if you specify links to the theme function, then it, then it goes take a look at this. First of all, it has a list of what we call default variables. So this are the available variables for the theme for the theming of links, and these are and you see the default value. So for links, the default value is nil. Uh, there is a uh, a part called attributes, uh, which we didn't specify, and there is a heading, which by default is an empty array. This is a variables array that we put in to the theme function in the example a few slides ago. Then the theme function says, okay, I'm going to add those default variables to it, and this is what we what you get them. It left the links and the heading part just unchanged, and it added the attributes part, so uh, you can be sure that the theme function or template that you use actually gets that attributes variable. It, uh, it's there by default, and if, the, if the, the user of your theme function doesn't provide it, then the theme API itself will provide it for you. The second thing that is in that list is what it actually should do. In this case, it says you should call a function, and the function is called theme links. That is a core Drupal function that's, called, uh, that's located in theme.inc. If you want to look, uh, take a look at it, then you can. And it defines all the logic that it needs to theme those links. The second, the, the last thing that we're going to take a look at is called the origin information. This defines where this, the where this information that is in the, uh, in the theme registry actually comes from. In this case, it comes from the implementation of hook theme of the system module. Well, in this case, it isn't that important, but you'll see a difference with this one. This is what is in the uh, in the registry for node. It's a little bit bigger, and we're going to step through it. First, it doesn't have a variables array. It has something called a render element. That means that we're going to put uh, that it actually expects a render array, and it's going to do something smart with that. Well, this is an example of a render array for a node. This, uh, I stripped off about everything, only the, the real important parts, the fact that it is actually a node, which node it is, and in which view mode and language it is, that's what I left. The other, uh, on, the, on the dots there's something like which fields are available and links that are be below the, the thing, even comments and everything can be there, but I left it out because it won't fit on the screen. This somehow gets through Drupal Render. Sometimes it's just Drupal Render is called with that build array, that, that render array. In some cases, uh, it's part of the bigger page array. And then, some, uh, then in the end, it will also run through Drupal Render. But Drupal Render will call itself with that small part of the render array. Drupal Render will say, ah, I've got a theme is node. Well, then I'm going to th call the theme function with node as the theme hook, and uh, the, the, uh, what I, the rest I specify is just that render array, and then I leave it up to the theme function for the rest. I know why it's just, yeah. Then it creates, then the theme function creates a variables array like this. You saw from the the example on the uh, on the previous slide that the value of render element was elements then it gives 
the, then it creates a new variable called elements and it just puts the whole render array in there. And then the theme function just runs just as normal and it, it, it leaves it up to the, the rest of the definition of how it should be themed to handle with just that elements part. You see that the other thing that is different is that it doesn't say you should call a function to theme this, but it says you should call a template. And the template is the node, template node.tpl.php, and it's located in themes slash bartic slash templates. In this case, I just used the default bartic theme of Drupal, and well, it displays this. The, there is actually no real difference between a theme function and a template. It's just an other way of writing things. There is, however, the, uh, a difference in because it is a different way of writing things, some solutions are more easy to write in a function than they are in a template. I found a very short uh, theme function in Drupal, uh, in Drupal core, it's co uh, it themes just the more link. Uh, at the top is a copy of the core theme function and I named it my theme, so it's actually an implementation of that function in my own theme. And, I, and at the bottom I created an equivalent template for that. If I would create a template called more-link.tpl.php, then Drupal will say, oh, well, now you created the template, then I register a template for you, no problem, and then it will ignore the default function that is in Drupal, and it will be overridden by your template. So, it's just another way of writing things. You see that it actually is pretty much the same. It's just just another syntax. But some theme function in Drupal core, and some if you do really fancy stuff with it, your theme functions can get pretty complex, and then. Uh, a template file becomes inconvenient. So then you uh, will, if you experimented with the theme functions, then you will start using them more for the more complex parts of it. The biggest part of the note part uh, of the note uh, entry in the registry is for the preprocess and process functions. Well, most themers actually think they're pretty scary. They're not. I'm going to tell you what they do so next time you won't think they're pretty scary. What they do is the following. We've seen that when you call theme node with some render array, it creates a variable array like this. This is a completely stripped down version of the default preprocessed function for node that is in Drupal core or actually in the in the node module of Drupal. I left actually most of it out. It's a, it's a very long function that will never fit on the screen. Um, and it's wh what it does, it changes the variables array. It gets the variables array as a parameter. You see that here. And you see that it has a ampersand before the variables name. That means that it is called by what's called a reference. And it means that the function is able to change the variable, variables array, just like a hook alter would be able to change something. You see that it adds a view mode from the elements parameter that it got. And it finds the actual node object and it, it puts it in an own variable and it puts it also in its own PHP variable so it can use it more easily in the other code. You see that it defines the title there, for example. Well, what we, what we get, if this would be the whole uh, preprocess function, it isn't, but if it would be, then this would be the new variables array. It uh, the, the function changes the variables array to this. Um, this makes sure that you can actually use dollar $title in your template. Because this variables array gets extracted to normal PHP variables in your template and you can use them. Another way of displaying the, the preprocess function is like some sort of pipeline. The variables start at the beginning of the pipeline and every function has the ability to change the, uh, to change the variables in the pipeline. 
uh, you see that I here also wrote down the process function. There's actually no real difference between a preprocess and a process function. The only difference is that the preprocess functions are run before the process functions. Th th that's really the only difference. This is the list of preprocess functions that we saw a few slides ago for nodes. Let's well, sp split them out a little. You see that the first part starts with template. The second part is about is uh, starting with module names, and the third part is starting with a name of a theme. So what it uh, what happens is that first the uh, the preprocess functions of Drupal core and of the fun uh, of the module that actually defines the theme hook. So the node module defines that there is something called a node that Drupal can theme, and it defines a preprocess function for it, and that one gets up top, and the others are just any other module that wishes to uh, to alter the behavior of the default node processing and Bartik theme also wants to change some things. Well, you see that there are uh, functions called just preprocess and some are called preprocess node. Well, the preprocess, the normal preprocess functions are used for every template, while preprocess node is just used for the node templates. There could have been some other functions there are they don't exist but those could have existed too so you can create a, a global preprocess function in your template that every variables array that goes to a template comes through that function so you can change the behavior of every template uh, and other modules can also add other preprocess functions back to the entry in the registry you see something actually pretty weird you would expect that the theme and uh, the 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 theme registry would say that that new template that we found is defined by a theme but according to the temp to the theme registry it's not defined by a theme it's defined by what is called a theme engine the theme engine is uh, a a piece of code that by default doesn't do very very much but what it does, it calls some functions in Drupal core that allows themes to be a lot more easy. You don't have to manually specify if you create a, uh, a node.tpl.php, but uh, Drupal will by default not recognize it if there would be no template engine. The template engine goes, uh, will search into your themes, and will find the template files that you create, and will find the theme functions that you create, and it will register them for you. So you don't have to specify that yourself. Um, the other thing that is displayed in this uh, slide is that uh, actually the, the base of the uh, theme registry is formed by the modules. The modules will define which things there are available that can be themed and themes and base themes can override the behavior. So it's very, very uncommon that a theme will define a completely new theme hook for uh, most of the things already exist in Drupal and there's no real use case available for defining your own uh, theme hooks. It is actually possible, but almost nobody does it. This is uh, the name of the default template engine in Drupal, PHP template. And well, it inspects your theme and it finds every template and every theme function that is there. For example, if you have a set of templates like this, note that is page.tpl.php, no, uh, views view, fields, backlinks, page.tpl.php, and page from.tpl.php. Well, the, the funny part about this is that actually in the theme registry, by default, there is no entry for node-page. It just doesn't exist. And uh, it will only exist if, your temp if you define a node-page.tpl.php in your theme. Well, 
uh, first before we're going to take a look at this, those things, um, a dash is equivalent to an underscore. It sounds weird, but in uh, in, in Drupal, your theme, uh, your templates, all contain dashes, and your theme functions all contain underscores. Uh, I don't know why that actually is. The theme functions can't contain dashes. That's just technically impossible in Drupal in in PHP, because uh, PHP will interpret the dash as a min sign and will try to uh, to evaluate that expression and will go terribly wrong. But I think somebody found that it was extremely ugly to have underscores in template uh, in template file names. So all over the theme.ink is logic scattered that converts underscores to dashes and the other way around. The way that Drupal recognizes that node does as page.tpl.php is by what we call a pattern. For node, the pattern is node dash dash because node doesn't explicitly uh, define a uh, a, a pattern, then it will assume that this is the, the pattern for node to use. So if your theme engine finds these uh, th these templates in your theme, and then we're going to take a specific look at node-page.tpl.php, it will strip off the extensions, so only node-page is left, and then it will convert all the dashes to underscores because Drupal internally just uses everywhere underscores. And then it will create a new entry in the theme registry with the name node -s page. And this is what it contains. It says that it should, uh, it, it should call a template. And which template? Well, the node -s page <coughs> template. And it is located in your theme. And well, the render element part is just copied from the default node uh, entry in the theme registry. And it says, well, actually, I'm not a normal uh, theme registry entry. I'm just a special case of node. Basehook is node. Well, the same goes for theme functions. For example, links. Links, by, uh, because links also doesn't define a pattern links underscore underscore is assumed. So you can create a function called my theme underscore links underscore underscore comments. You can you can actually create it and it will it will be it will be used sometimes. It will be used to theme the links that are below comments. Then it will uh, it, it will strip off the part that defines your theme name. So the the my theme underscore part is ignored. And this is the theme hook that will be created. And this is what it will contain. It will say, OK, you need to call a function. And uh, that function is called my theme underscore links underscore underscore comments. And this is the variables that are, uh, th that are available for that function. And again, a base hook. And a base hook is links in this case. It's just it just points to the other part, and uh, well, we we'll come up with what, what with Drupal will do with that. Um, those uh, uh, Drupal will, in some cases, Drupal will need to call this theme hook in, instead of the default theme hook because you don't want if you're theming the links behi below comments, then you want Drupal to pick up this. Well. For links, it works like this. Um, actually, this is done. Uh, this is done somewhere in a render array. But to keep it a little bit uh, understandable, you, uh, I wrote it l down like this. Uh, it will create a call to the theme function with a theme hook links underscore underscore comments, and well, it defines also a variables array containing some links. Uh, what you see is that um, that Drupal will st will start to look for a entry called links underscore underscore comments, and if it doesn't find one in the registry, it will take a look for links. Well, it will find links because that's defined by Drupal core, and 
then it uh, so if you do, don't define links underscore underscore comments, then it will uh, then it will automatically pick up the default. Uh, this is what we call a uh, theme uh, theme hook selection by context, because it is it actually uh, which uh, theme hook Drupal chooses doesn't depend on what is actually in the variables array, but it is depends on where it is used. There is nothing in that array of links that makes Drupal say, oh, I'm, th I'm theming links of comments. I'm Drupal knows that because somewhere outside of the theme function, the, uh, the logic says, okay, this is the links below comments. Uh, you see that view actually a little bit misuses that. It uh, views creates a list of available theme hooks and if you s don't just specify one theme hook but an array of theme hooks to the theme function then it will start at the top and take a look at the theme registry well can I just fi find this one no I can't well then I take the, f the next one and so on until it finds one that it can use uh, with note it's a little bit different uh, we go back to uh, to this build array, we've seen this before, and then theme node gets created, and this is the variables array that it gets created. And then we're going to take a look at that preprocess function again. It gets the variables array, and somewhere in that preprocess function is this code. It creates a, a PHP variable for nodes, and then it adds a theme hook suggestion. And there's a list of theme hook suggestions in your variables array and you can add items to that. Um, that list of theme hook suggestions tell Drupal, well, if you're going to theme this, then you might take a look at the registry again because maybe there will be an entry for a node-page. And if that entry exists, then I want you to not to call the default behavior of nodes, but I want you to call the template is defined in the node-page. You see that views, back to the, the views call, views misuses that. Um, views could have also used that logic of the preprocess functions, but it decided to, to leave uh, the old Drupal 6 behavior with a, uh, a list of available theme hooks uh, well, because it, in the logic of, of views, it's a little bit easier to write it like that. But the problem with that is that it is actually impossible to change the order of those things. So you cannot, in your theme, add something smart to allow uh, Drupal to pick up another template for a very specific use case. So this is not as flexible as this logic. And that's the problem with Vue, so I think Vue should change that, this, but uh, it requires a, a real big change, so that will take some time. Maybe I'll, take, I'll spend some time in it, but it, get, it gets real complex when you want to do that, so I don't think that will be done soon. Back to the node example, you could, for example, change that array like this. I created, I, I, I showed a little copy of, uh, of that preprocess function for nodes at the top. This is, uh, this is the Drupal, uh, the function that is in the node module. And I stripped down about everything, but I left some important parts. One is the view mode, and the other is that it puts the node in another variable. If you create a function called my theme preprocess node, and your theme is enabled, of course, then Drupal will call this function after the default template preprocess node function. Um, if you then create a line like this, we uh, at the first line of our function we create a specific variable for the view mode, and at the second line we create a variable for the node. And then we're going to use that, we, we add a theme hook suggestion for, uh, node, for the node type followed by the view mode and for just node followed by the view mode. 
And if you do that, then you can use these templates. So you can change, you, you can add this function, and if you do that, you can start creating a template just for a teaser view. Well, actually, that isn't always the smartest thing to do, but it is a good example of the flexibility of the preprocessed functions. The, well, some final things to note are the following. Um, or actually, one final thing. Uh, there is the develop module for those who have never seen that. You should really check that out. Um, and it c contains a uh, a function that allows you to simply view the registry. So you install that module, you enable it, and then you go to the URL devel slash devel slash theme slash registry, and it will show you the whole registry. So you can take a look at what is there and what the theme function will do for you, and it helps you with debugging uh, why Drupal won't pick up your template or all kinds of other complex things. Well, I promised you that I would ask, are there any questions? What is it? Yeah. Um, we're working mainly on uh, Drupal 6. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one of the things we've been experiencing is uh, the difference between uh, theme functions and theme files. Yeah, in Drupal 6, there is actually a real difference. This is about Drupal 7. Yeah, so uh, I want to, to, to ask if the, the, the preprocess functions, is that a change that uh, came in the uh, Well, no, in Drupal 6, there were preprocess functions, but okay. the preprocess functions just don't work on, temp on theme functions. They just work on uh, template files. And uh, the other difference is the way that the overriding works. Uh, you might have noticed in uh, Drupal 6 that if your theme doesn't have its own node.tpl.php, then a node page.tpl.php won't work. You can try that. Uh, if you create a node-page.tpl.php in your theme, you might you would expect it to pick up, but it doesn't if there is no node template in your theme. Or actually more complex if the node template isn't in the same directory or a directory below the template where uh, below the location where your uh, node-page.tpl is located. You can experiment with that, you can create real weird behavior with that. <laughs> well, um, the, the, the concept of a build mode is that al allows you to specify uh, different ways of looking at a node. In Drupal 6, it is a very, uh, very, uh, a very limited thing. It just has a full node view and a teaser view. In Drupal 7, it got a little bit more flexible and it allows you to add own uh, build modes. Um, if you want to know more about that, there is, I think, a session about display suite this conference, I don't know exactly when, but they will tell you a lot more about that, about that because Display Suite allows you to set up specific layouts for specific view modes for an entity in general. So not just for nodes, but also for users. So if you want to know more about view modes, then that's a real, uh, real session you should attend. Any other questions? Well, then, this is it. Uh, well, there, there is, they told me that there is a survey on, uh, on the Drupal, uh, DrupalCon website that uh, allows you to, uh, to say what you think about the session. I will, uh, in, the, in my session, I will upload the, the slides there. Thank you for listening and uh, have a nice conference.